The uniqueness of neem, especially when it is taken along with turmeric, any kind of parasital life which is there, all these things get eliminated. It facilitates that, that your transmission of energy is evenly across. And once you start noticing this, then by choice you can move your energies where you want. So, the neem and turmeric together has the power to break down the sperm cells and make it into another level of energy which is called as ojas. Once every cell in the body is encapsulated in ojas, you will be a glowing human being. So in the yoga center, the day starts with a small marble-sized ball of neem and turmeric. There are many aspects to this, of what impact it has on your system. But first of all, the neem tree, which is generally all over India. Today probably bring, being grown in another ten to twelve different geographical locations around the world, but originally by nature indigenous to Indian subcontinent, he is one of the most complex leaves that you can find on the planet. It is supposed to have uh, over one hundred and fifty complex chemical patterns within it. There are both health aspects, energetic aspects and spiritual dimensions attached to this. So about health, the fundamental mistake that modern medicine systems have made is kind of absolutism about health. That this is health, this is not health. Now they tell you, your whatever, whatever chemistry, blood chemistry must be this, this and this, then you're healthy. Believe me, most of you or many of you may fit into those parameters and still not be healthy. Because Health is a certain reverberance, it is not an absolutism. You may be perfectly healthy right now, in ten minutes you may not be, if certain things happen in the system. Well, ten minutes may look too much, by this evening you may not be healthy, it's possible. It's very much possible. This idea that you can define health as this is it, and you define it in chemical parameters and say, this, 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 you're healthy. No. Many things can fluctuate within the system without you being unhealthy. Or many things can be stable without you being healthy. So having said that, what the neem does to your system? Well, in more tangible terms, one immediate thing it will do is, it will keep your alimentary tract clean. When we say clean, this is a region, this whole digestive process is a region where you have maximum amount of uh, other life. Within this alimentary tract, there are a whole host of microorganisms. Many of them have turned friendly to us. We are living because of them, we are able to digest food because of them. Many, many functions in the body happen because of them. But still there are many who are harmful to us. The uniqueness of neem, especially when it is taken along with turmeric, if these two things go together, largely those things which are not necessary for the body, those things can… that which can harm the body, any kind of parasital life which is there, all these things get eliminated. A clean colon is very vital for health. If you go to see or consult any traditional doctor, 
like an Ayurvedic doctor or a Siddha Vaidya or Eastern medicine largely, whatever your health problem, first thing is they will purge you because they want your colon clean. For your physical and psychological health, they want your colon clean. If you just become a little more conscious about how you eat, what happens in your body, what happens in your mind can be greatly influ influenced. See, if you build any structure, there is a design to it. There is an architectural design. But there is also a part where the quality of the material and the execution, efficiency of execution are involved. Just because the design is great, it does not mean the building will turn out great. The quality of material that goes into the making and who makes it, makes a world of difference. That goes for this also. With this, the design is perfect. It took millions and millions of years to perfect this design. The whole evolutionary process took that long to arrive at this design. But execution and the material that you use to build this is very important too. So what kind of food you put in, it's not just about your culture. Cultures might have evolved according to the survival needs of that place. Cultures in different parts of the world have evolved according to what was available in that place and uh, survival needs, how the economies were, what was happening, what was the main form of livelihood. Accordingly, cultures ev evolved. Cultures are never perfect. Unfortunately, people get super identified with this and think their culture is perfect. No culture in the world is perfect because the mess that you do in this generation is tomorrow's culture. Hello? And you think you're doing this mess very consciously? No, it's just happening, isn't it? Whatever rubbish you do today, next generation picks it up or rejects it and does the reverse of it, whatever. But it is a consequence of this generation's culture which breeds the next generation of culture. So culturally what you're eating is not the point. What goes best into this system? What is this machine designed for? What kind of fuel? Knowing this is very important. So if you look at this, look at it this way, keeping the body in a certain level of balance and efficiency of digestive process, very important. How much food do you need to maintain the level of activity you wish to maintain in your life? We are talking about fuel efficiency for all our automobiles. You've seen the 1950s, 50s were a little better, 60s and 70s cars in United States. If you break down ten cars, you could build a battleship. <laughs> That's how much metal they used to build a car. Well, now they're getting sleeker and this, why? One important aspect is that fuel efficiency. To travel a mile, how much are you consuming? Well, we're thinking ecological terms, think in terms of your health terms. That is, to process, let us say, one unit of energy, how much food do you have to eat means that much excessive load on the system. So, if you don't have your own sense, every day in the morning if you eat a little bit of neem and turmeric on an empty stomach and drink some maybe tepid water, it will bring that sense to you because body will respond to food in a certain way. It will tell you when it's enough. You're not able to figure it out yourself, every cell in the body will speak. Because neem and turmeric together creates a certain excess to the cellular level, that when you generate energy, how is it distributed? Well, uh, People have been asking me to talk, speak about internal combustion engine. 
So how distribution of energy happens, which in an automobile is called transmission, determines how efficient a vehicle is and how much fuel it consumes to generate the same amount of power. Power in the engine is one thing, power at the wheels is another thing, completely different. Today, the top racing machines in the world are just 2.7 liter, that's a cap they've set for the Formula Ones, but they are the fastest machines. Because power at the engine and power at the wheel, the loss is limit… very, very minimum. Well, we have uh, pickup trucks here which generate 700 bhp at the engine, but what goes to the wheel is another matter. So there is something called as transmission. So what you generate in your stomach, where all does it go? To what extent does it go is a very important aspect which in today's world people are simply not conscious of. If you want to facilitate this, well, there are yogic practices, but even to assist that, this neem and turmeric can be a tremendous process because it facilitates that, that your transmission of energy is evenly across. And once you start noticing this, then by choice you can move your energies where you want. When I say you can move your energies where you want, right now, uh, <laughs> if I say this, people will uh, start imagining all kinds of things, so let me limit that. But anyway, right now I want to speak. If I have my energies focused in my throat consciously, it may happen to a whole lot of singers and others just, you know, by natural, inter you know, inclinations. But if you're consciously there, you will see your speech will have a different kind of impact. If you look at something, if you move your energies to your eyes, not that everything, the dominance is in that place, then you will see your look has a power which everybody has eyes, maybe they're twenty-twenty. No, 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 I, I'm not talking about the year. I mean to say the vision <laughs> Oh, <laughs> we must be careful about using this number, huh? Twenty-twenty means people go So, you may… your vision may be normal, but doesn't have the same power, will not grasp the same things, will not penetrate the same way. <clears throat> like this, there are various aspects. You want to do something with your hands, if you can have your energies focused in your hands, your touch will be another level of touch altogether. So, if this has to happen, first and foremost thing is, the transmission of energy in the system is smooth. Neem and turmeric as a combination on an empty stomach does wonders in this direction, wonders. So those who are doing sadhana of some kind, for them it's very important. There are other dimensions to this, that is, uh, if we use this neem and turmeric on an empty stomach. One aspect is, it has the power to transform one dimension of energy within you to another, in the sense. In the yogic culture, this must be understood with proper perspective. The doctors say that if you consume excessive neem, it will destroy the sperm cells, which is good proof for what we have been saying for thousands of years. That is, see there are various kinds of cells. Today, modern science is beginning to recognize how significantly different they are. What is on your skin, what is in your bone marrow, what is in your sperm, what is in your brain, these are different kinds of things, almost like another life. Though there is a common thread of information in all of them, they're very, very different. And what it takes for the body, to generate an epithelial cell and what it takes to generate a sperm 
or what it takes to generate another cell, neurological cells are very different level of energy involvement with the body. Well, lot of people will question this, but they will arrive at it in another twenty-five or fifty years' time. Yes, I'm telling you. So, one dimension of human life is... See, I want you to understand the miracle. Don't think about the sexuality of it. Just with a single cell, huh? Two, all right? But just with one single cell, you can ignite a new life which sits here like this. Is it a small thing? I'm asking. Because people are too sexually messed up in their head, they're not looking at the miracle of it. Just with one cell, just look at the way life has sprouted and what it's become. Isn't it so? We populated the whole world. Tch. We need to do something on that, that's a different matter <laughs> So, the neem and turmeric together has the power to break down the sperm cells and make it into another level of energy which is called as ojas. When every cell in your body slowly gets wrapped in ojas, if you're doing sadhana and your transmission is good and even across the body, when every cell in the body is encapsulated in ojas, when I say ojas, what is it? Show it to me. In my blood, blood work, they said no ojas. All right, in your blood work, there's no life also, I want you to know, there's only chemistry. Nobody ever proved that you're alive, hello? You have to prove <laughs> So, ojas will encapsulate every cell. Once every cell in the body is encapsulated in ojas, you will be a glowing human being. In every… in every… Uh, in every aspect of that word, you will be a glowing human being, within and without, you will be like that. This is something everybody needs to work at because this is not…